pump money. And she went to my younger sister who was having problem with her throat. We call this hiccup. When you are not able to something that gets choked inside your throat. In my language, we call it sinop. Sinisinop. Hiccup. There is something here in the throat. And you know what my mother did? And she said she based this on her belief when she also was still a young girl. And my grandmother, his mother, also did this. Taking a piece of cotton and then wet it with her saliva. And then with the cotton plus her saliva, put this on the side of the throat where the hip hop seems to be located or the something that gets stuck. And then the mother started to rub the throat. And you know what happened? The hip hop was gone. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> Perhaps mothers can also do, do this. Huh? And see whether it works. I think it works. I mention this because this is something that Jesus did with the man. Although not, not using a piece of cotton, but Jesus made use of his saliva and then with his hand rubbed this on the eyes of the blind man. And then the man was able to see. There was a time in the tradition of the church during baptism that the child was not only poured with water, that the child was not only anointed with the oil on the forehead, but there used to be a time when the priest, with his saliva, also part of the liturgy, like Jesus, smeared the eyes of the one to be baptized. As if to teach the one being baptized and the parents and godparents that the saliva can heal the person be able to see. And this is exactly what happened to the man who was born blind and came to Jesus and Jesus did this ritual to him. The man was just gazing at Jesus, just trying to imagine the looks of Jesus. And Jesus approached him. And he was healed of his blindness and he was able to see. What about those who saw this miracle that Jesus did? Were their eyes also open? I think what happened was that though the man was cured of his illness, from being blind to being able to see, those who witnessed the miracle of Jesus failed to see with the eyes of faith what happened to the man. And that is why they could not believe the healing done by Jesus. Though their eyes was open, but their heart was closed. Though they have eyes to see, but they have a heart that is hardened like stone. And that is why they also fail to receive the miracle that they have seen on the part of the man who received the, the grace from Jesus. This season of Lent is a time where all of us can spend a few moments to gaze at the face of Jesus in our time of prayer, in our visit to the church, and ask the Lord, like the blind man, though we have eyes to see, but perhaps our heart is close to heal us of the blindness of our heart. If in the heart God dwells, then it is through the heart that we should see with our eyes. 
our heart has eyes to see that our two eyes are unable to see. And this is where, in my own personal reflection, I could see that the man was not only healed and able to see, but at the time when Jesus healed him, Jesus gave the blind man a third eye. And where is that third eye of faith? The eyes of faith. And the eyes of faith is not with our eyes, but the eyes of faith is in the heart. Because then we are, we will then see people not with the ordinary eyes, but then we will start to see people with the eyes of God, with the eyes of love. It is different when we see routinely and every day in our life just with our mere ordinary eyes, because our eyes has limitations. The eyes are not able to see the heart. Just like what happened to David. When Samuel looked at David, he did not look at David with his mere appearance. Yes, David is handsome and broody. But Samuel looked at David through his heart. This person has a generous heart. This person has a loving heart. We pray that during this season of Lent that we be given also a chance not only to see Jesus but also to receive through Jesus in this season of Lent the third eye, the eyes of faith. So that when we travel on the road of life, we will not only be able to see in our mere two eyes, but when we judge people, when we look at people, we look at people with the eyes of faith. This can only happen if we allow Jesus to smear with His words, with His sacraments, our eyes. So that again, we will be able to see. It is said that there are different kinds of blindness in a person. What we have heard in the Gospel was a man who was physically blind. He was, not, he was not able to see, but when he met Jesus, and when Jesus performed the ritual of putting saliva into his eyes, the man's eyes was open, and again, now he is able to see. There are those who are spiritually blind, they have eyes to see, but they refuse to see. Maybe they are selected in what they would like to see. This is what we call in spiritual terms, the spiritually blind persons. How many of us are spiritually blind? In looking at other persons, and even in looking deep into ourselves, it is easy for us to condemn people. It is easy for us to see the weaknesses of others. But we can also be spiritually blind to see our own human weakness. That we need other people to tell us that this is who you are now. But there are those who also can be said to be emotionally blind. Because of so much emotional attachment, we are unable to let go. Because of so much emotional attachment, we are not able to see with the eyes of faith what is really happening to another person's life. We refuse to accept that that person has also their own misgivings their own human mistakes in life. We refuse to listen to what the mind is, is saying, especially when the emotion takes over what is reasonable and truth. They said a person who is so much in love can be emotionally blind. Because sometimes we fail to see the reality 
for the truth of the other person because we are emotionally united. And they said, love is blind. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, I think it is also good to reflect on a fourth kind of blindness. And the fourth kind of blindness is said to be our blind spots. Our blind spots. And what is that? It can be our pride. We just do not seem to accept that at times we can be so proud of ourselves that we fail to see our own weakness. I am now the breadwinner of this family. And because I am the one supporting the family, then I refuse to accept any of my human weakness. Then I refuse to accept that all my decisions at times have to give in to some other person's opinions. We refuse to accept our mistakes that can also be our blind spot. And for husband and wife, for best of friends, our blind spots can be our jealousy and our suspicion of one another. When this happens, then we seem to be lacking in terms of personal trust. Which of the blindness are we currently experiencing? None of the blind, none of the physically blind, I suppose. But perhaps spiritually, emotionally, blind spot as well. Or maybe all of the above except the physical blind. <laughs> At the end, my sisters and brothers, I would like to share with you this thing that happened inside a professional box. Because after the homily of the priest, this person approached the priest and said, Father, can I confess? Sure, why not? So after the Mass, the priest brought this man to the confession room. Then the man started to pour out all of his sins. But there is this last sin that the man was a bit hesitant to confess to the priest because the priest may not be able to understand him. But the priest encouraged him, go on, go on. There is no sin that the Lord cannot forgive. So pour it out of the Lord. Confess it to the Lord. Okay, Father, I trust in you and I hope that you can forgive me of this my sin. It is about the sin of pride. Wow, let me hear. You know, Father, every morning when I look at myself in the mirror, I can only admire myself and say, How handsome! <laughs> Let us now all stand to profess.